All right. We're going to come back to the, the EOC as they um, look to work that that out. Um, and next up in our agenda is transportation and public works update um, with Juan uh, Cadena. Juan, are you available and can you talk to us about road conditions? Yes, yes, I'm available. Can you hear me good? We can. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, we have started our uh, 24 hour rotation started Monday morning. So we have crews working 24 seven, uh, sanding, sanding as needed. Uh, just keeping in mind our priorities right now are bridges and hills. Uh, we've also added um, emergency room entrances and some other emergency response areas. Uh, but right now we're pretty much sanding all our locations that we cross uh, about 95% of the bridges we're, we're dropping sand on. Uh, keeping in mind, I guess everyone needs to keep in mind, we are just looking at city bridges. Uh, TxDOT, TxDOT maintains its own highway. So everything TxDOT, all the highway roads are, are maintained by them and the toll roads are are uh, maintained by another entity as well, but uh, we're just focusing on our city streets or our city bridges and hills. Right, and that difference is important for our um, residents to keep in mind. Uh, anything else you have to add? And we thank you for the crews that are out keeping the streets of Fort Worth safe. All right, no, really just wanna add that uh, accumulation is significant on our on our roads, so we just we just ask everyone to uh, be careful, drive slow, uh, to just be aware of the vehicles around you, and uh, leave plenty of distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Okay. Next up, we'll go to the Fort Worth Police Department and their Public Information Officer Joshua Johnson. Joshua. Yes. Thank you, Renee. Can you hear me? We can. Well, yes, thank you to Juan and all the great work that they're doing that uh, directly affects us and the many things that, that we're responding to. As of when this weather system rolled in yesterday, we've uh, responded to approximately 225 accidents, both major and minor from yesterday and today. Uh, we'd like to report currently there are no fatalities reported related to uh, the weather related accidents. Um, just want to remind people if they can stay inside, we understand sometimes you have to leave. And when you do just some helpful tips to remember. Dress warm. If you can't put a blanket in your car. Allow yourself tons of uh, time and patience. And more importantly, have a cell phone. Or another way to contact emergency personnel. If there happens to be an emergency. That you, uh, you become a part of. Just a couple of uh, reminders that there's. Extreme importance right now and for emergency situations to call 911. But if it's a non emergency situation, as if you're just a stranded motorist uh, on the side of a roadway, you're not in any immediate harm, you can call our non emergency number, which is 817 392 4222. Or you can call the phone number on the back of uh, the Texas driver's license for roadway help as well. And just oh, wow. lastly, go ahead. No, that was I didn't know that was that yes was yes number. yes on the on the back of the Texas driver's license and I have that number right here. Uh, I came up with it after uh, I sent this in. It's one eight hundred five two five 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 five. And like I said, both those numbers are for uh, non emergency if you have to be stranded on the side of the. Lastly, just during these times, uh, as a community, it takes everyone looking out for each other uh, to remain safe and for us to make it out of this. So. Um, just please remember to check on your elderly and vulnerable neighbors in your community, in your area. See if they need any help and uh, just contact us if uh, we need to check on them as well. Okay. Craig, it looks like the um, EOC is on mute still. There you go. Let's go back to the emergency operations center update with Kyle Clay. Hey folks, uh, that's Kyle Clay, K-Y-L-E-C-L-A-Y. Um, so uh, the emergency operations center uh, activated yesterday morning for the winter storm. As we're currently running with about a staff of about 20 persons from various city departments. Uh, main focus of that operations center 
is uh, to work to uh, keep our center our services working effectively. At present, we're well stocked uh, and we're ready for any responses. Um, oh, I can't hear me. All right, can y'all hear me? We can. Okay. Um, so weather wise, uh, the weather today we have light precipitation, uh, which will continue. We expect about a, a tenth of an inch of uh, accumulation. Uh, big weather starts tomorrow, uh, tomorrow in the afternoon and the evening hours. We expect uh, conditions to worsen as the temps will remain below freezing, uh, resulting in ice accumulation uh, affecting infrastructure, power lines, tree limbs. Uh, that's throughout uh, Thursday morning. Driving is going to be very, very hazardous. Uh, travel is not advised. If you can, if you're able, please stay at home. Um, temps should we expect them to be rising by Thursday and really improve by Friday with a high of about 51 and sunny skies. So it'll turn around when it does. Okay, thank you uh, for that Thanks. update, Kyle. And we'll uh, keep it on you guys and move over to the fire department update with Craig Project. Um, the public information officer out of our fire department. And it's Craig, C R A I G, Trojic, T R O J A C E K. And I keep saying I'm the, the public information officer for the fire department working here at the EOC uh, the last couple of days. So the numbers that I have, we kind of started yesterday um, at midnight. So yesterday morning, 12 a.m., um, January 30th. Uh, and we're kind of keeping tabs on specific calls that would be more geared towards towards weather right now. Um, NBA wise, like I said, from that time period, we're looking at about 167 NBAs, both major and minor. Um, CO calls, so if, if, if people are in their homes and they've got uh, warming equipment that's not burning cleanly, uh, we, we only have one call. CO right now, which that's a that's a good sign. Um, I know right now with the weather the way it is, and the temperatures below freezing, people are doing they kind of go do, do some some crazy things sometimes to try to stay warm. So we're we're excited that that number is, is stayed so low. Uh, in regards to that particular call, if anybody is experiencing, you know, carbon monoxide is odorless and colorless, so it's not something that you're aware of if that's happening in your in your home. Um, but if you do start experiencing any kind of headaches, nausea, uh, you know, anything like that, we do, do tell people um, kind of gauge it. If that's out of the norm for you and you've got multiple people in your homes that are doing that uh, to, to go ahead and call us to come out and, and kind of check, check you out at your home. Um, exposure calls. We've had about 12 calls for exposures, uh, basically cold related. Being out in the elements, things like that. Again, at this point, no fatalities uh, because of the weather uh, we're aware of. We've had about 12 outside and grass brush fires. Uh, we have had six residential fires um, since the weather storm kicked off, two commercial fires. And when I'm talking about those particular fires, those are all working fires. So those are things that when we show up on scene, um, all the companies that are assigned to that ticket, uh, every, everybody's all hands on deck. Uh, it's not something that we show up and we can just kind of control with one truck. Um, the, the number of displaced because of those fires uh, is, is three adults and six children. Um, like I said, we have had two more fires today that I'm not sure on the, dis the displaced of, of the residents at that point in time. Um, kind of the same messaging. You know, being down here at, at the EOC, we, we're trying to make sure we keep everything consistent uh, as we move forward. And so all the safety tips and things that you already heard uh, from today, we, we, we mirror those uh, messages. Great. Thank you for that update. Um, next, we are going to our code and solid waste department, which is um, combined into one under the leadership of Director Brandon Bennett, and we know folks are interested in their trash pickup. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Brandon Bennett, and you know the, the the worst thing that can ever happen to a solid waste director is an ice storm, because uh, people really want their garbage picked up uh, on the day that it's supposed to be picked up, uh, and when the roads are icy, we uh, have challenges with that. And we really appreciate all the work that uh, Public Works and the Police Department, and the Fire Department are doing to prioritize, and we don't want to be uh, something that hinders that, and so. Uh, we have worked with our landfill and our recycling partners, our contractor that picks up the residential waste, and then all of the private outfits that pick up the commercial industrial waste. And collectively, um, everyone agreed to close early on Monday, uh, decided to stay closed uh, on Tuesday, uh, and looking forward to Wednesday, uh, those operations will not open up. So for our residential customers that we are responsible for, uh, a few people on Monday and then all of our Tuesday and Wednesday routes. Uh, go ahead and bring your carts back from the curb. Uh, next week, we will collect your garbage on your normal collection day. You can have uh, excess garbage that you put in plastic bags, put those outside of the cart. We'll get those picked up on collection day. Uh, just be aware that uh, in order to expedite the service, that there'll be one truck that comes along that will empty the cart and then another truck that will come along and grab the bag. So they don't miss the bags. It's just a separate truck that comes by after the, the cart truck to get those picked up. Yeah. Um, the other is that um, because the landfill uh, has been closed since uh, late Monday, uh, that commercial industrial routes, uh, they have not been picked up either. So uh, we are going to waive enforcement for the next several weeks. We're going to allow our commercial and industrial uh, partners to also have bags outside of dumpsters and other receptacles, give them a chance to get caught up. Uh, as part of getting caught up, uh, we have suspended yard waste collection this week. We'll suspend it next week. Uh, that way we can take those crews and those trucks and put them on picking up uh, garbage uh, and get everything caught up next week. And that's critical. Uh, Fort Worth, like every other major city, uh, we have enough garbage trucks to service uh, certain parts of the city uh, every day of the week. If one day gets pushed, there's not enough resources to pick up that scheduled day and the day that was that was missed. And so that's why we push things uh, a week out. Our drop off stations, uh, they're, they're closed due to the weather. We anticipate getting those open uh, on Thursday. It may be a, a late start, but we'll get those open. So if people have garbage, they just have to get rid of. Uh, they can take them to our drop off stations. It's free of charge for residents. Uh, and we will allow residents to actually bring a little bit more garbage free of charge uh, if they so decide. Um, the uh, the other thing that we want to make sure that 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 we touch base on is animal welfare. That uh, our two shelters uh, closed early today. They'll be closed uh, tomorrow. Uh, the welfare of our animals is our highest priority, both taking care of the ones that are in our shelter uh, and the ones that are that are out um, in the neighborhoods. So if you see a stray animal, uh, continue to, to give us a call. If you are aware of or see an animal that doesn't have proper shelter, food, water, uh, things like that, give us a call 24-7. Uh, uh, we have call takers and we have staff that continue to answer those on a priority basis. So uh, the gist of it is uh, take care of your pets, uh, take care of the neighborhood pets where you can uh, work together on that. And then on the solid waste side, um, this is just one of those uh, rare occurrences where we had to push several days and, and next week, it'll be all hands on deck to get everything caught up and get back to a normal schedule the following week. Great, let's hang on to your, your garbage for now and we'll make it up to you in the coming um, days and if needed weeks. Appreciate um, that update from you, Brandon. And then um, our, uh, as we begin to wind down, um, an important element um, is our homelessness services, which actually falls under the Neighborhood Services Department. And with that, we have Scott Daniels, the Public Information Officer for the um, Neighborhood Services Division. Scott. Yeah. Can you go. hear me now? We can. Okay. So I'm Scott Daniels with the City of Fort Worth's Neighborhood Services Department. Our mission is to protect our most vulnerable. We use city funds to support overflow shelter beds for people experiencing homelessness on cold nights like tonight when all regular shelter beds are full. We could not do this without the help from our community partners, Presbyterian Night Shelter, Union Gospel Mission, DRC Solutions, the Salvation Army, and True Worth Place. 
So let's take you through what this week has looked like so far. On Sunday night, 31 guests stayed at Riverside Community Center. 40 guests stayed at Presbyterian Night Shelter. Last night, it was even colder out, and we saw more guests. 45 guests stayed at Riverside Community Center. 40 guests stayed at Presbyterian Night Shelter. Now, that 45 sounds like a lot. There are 100 beds at that location, so it wasn't even half full. We will open as much overflow as needed. Overflow is moving locations tonight due to transportation safety concerns. So it will be at Union Gospel Mission instead of Riverside Community Center. Presbyterian Night Shelter will continue to offer up 40 beds. DRC Solutions provides overflow shelter staffing at Union Gospel Mission. We anticipate overflow to continue tonight and tomorrow night. The city funds our partners to provide these needed services. The city also supports with providing cots and blankets. We urge all people experiencing homelessness to seek out shelter, report to regular shelters, and then overflow will be opened as needed. True Worth Place opens to all from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. with breakfast and lunch served. Salvation Army and Presbyterian Night Shelter allow regular guests to stay at shelter all day during the cold weather streaks. And the Salvation Army continues to serve homeless families. So any homeless family seeking shelter should go to Salvation Army. Presbyterian Night Shelter allows dogs as pets and all shelters welcome service animals. We also use outreach and signs to spread awareness. And of course, we use our phones. So if you or someone you know is homeless, we urge you to text FW Cold to 817-241-3544. That's one of the ways to get alerts and stay up to date with changes happening in our shelter program. It's how we've been staying in contact with many of our unsheltered residents. Again, F. W C O L D text that to 817-241-3544. And when you add that number, make sure that you save it to your phone so it doesn't go to spam. Great. Is that what you got, Scott? Appreciate all the work that okay. um, your department and and those um, working uh, on behalf of, of those not housed are doing. So just a reminder that we have an active website that has all of the absolute latest updates that you may need to get. That's fortworthtexas.gov slash winter. We're also updating all of our social media platforms as they come in. And if you go to that website, you'll see drop down boxes within each of the departments within the city of Fort Worth um, that you can gain um, the latest information from. And we also remind folks to use the My Fort Worth app it is the official app for residents to report non-emergency issues and then of course fort worth texas alerts at fortworthtexasalerts.gov is a place where you can um, receive information via your choice phone text or email regarding emergency ongoing situations um, and at this time i'd like to turn things over um, to our mayor maddie parker Thanks, Renee. I'll be brief. Mostly just wanted to be on to thank all the city staff for working so hard um, when other family members across Fort Worth get to stay home, especially our first responders and essential city staff, which is really why we canceled our city council meeting this morning to try to not be part of the problem and keep people at home as much as possible. And um, we already went over this with Scott. Thanks for such a thorough overview for those families that are experiencing homelessness. Special thanks to our nonprofit community for stepping up in such a significant way. Um, UGM, DRC Solutions, Presbyterian Night Shelter, and of course, Salvation Army. We know that you're stretching resources to make sure we're serving those most vulnerable. And to the city staff to making sure all those efforts are coordinated, thank you as well. Uh, it's already been mentioned, but just making sure we're taking care of one another in our neighborhoods, especially the elderly or those that can't get out very easily, um, making sure that their, their heat is on or they have resources as needed. Um, to the public, please utilize those non-emergency numbers as much as possible if you aren't experiencing emergency that we're that we went over today. But of course, if you do have an emergency, call 911. That's what our first responders are doing right now to respond to those that need us need us the most. Um, and thank you very much for organizing this array. I hope that those in the media found this to be helpful. 
just there's a lot of moving parts in a large metro area and we know how important it is for you to have the latest and greatest information for for your listeners and for those that are watching you on television appreciate those words and thank you um, Mayor Parker, for your leadership, as always. If we have any um, reporters who have questions in the chat, um, Michelle Goot is the um, host presenter, and so you can send those um, messages at this time to her to be able to ask for any um, one of our speakers that we've had or questions that you may have in general for the city of Fort Worth. Michelle, do you have any um, that you'd like to get started with or um, reporters? Are, are, is it looking like We've provided the information that you need. I, I see several of you still on with us. So thank you again for your time. Yes, I, can you hear me? Yes. I believe um, Harrison had a question about the commercial um, pickup and if Brandon could provide a few more details on that. Yes, I can. So, you know, from Fort Worth, because we, we are responsible for the residential side, we generally just talk about residential collection. What's different uh, in this particular ice storm is that this, the face of the landfill uh, with the ice and the bridge that goes across with the ice uh, to get to the landfill are so unsafe that they close the landfill down Monday afternoon today and it'll be closed tomorrow. So there's no place, reasonable place within a reasonable distance that the trucks can pick up the garbage and then take the garbage to empty and then go pick up more garbage. And in fact, that's not necessarily a bad thing. As icy as the roads are, uh, I think if we put these large garbage trucks out there, we would just be adding uh, more work for the police and, and fire department. So um, the, the commercial and industrial folks who are private enterprise, uh, they're not regulated by the city. Uh, they've also made decisions to, to not pick up waste. Uh, there's some specialty waste. There's some certain customers uh, where they were serviced. So I don't want to say it's across the board. Uh, but then again, the, the trucks that service them are, are filling up with garbage are now full uh, and, and there'll be some delay even for them. Uh, I don't see this as a public health crisis that um, there's still uh, capacity for those special waste customers. Uh, and I also see this as um, on Thursday when things open up that all of our vendors, private and public, uh, are ready to, to, to get all hands on deck, uh, get the garbage picked up and get back to some sense of normalcy. Great. Thanks for that update, Brandon. Hope that um, helps you, Harrison, with the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Any others, Michelle? Um, I, don't, I don't see any others. If there's anything, any questions that people have, they can email oh, Teresa Woodard has raised her hand, so. Hello, I'm sorry, I put a question in the chat, but I guess it hasn't been seen. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I, I just wanted to see if somebody could uh, explain maybe some specific streets in Fort Worth, maybe some specific problem areas that emergency responders are seeing um, problems develop maybe repeatedly over the last few hours. And then if there's any specific area you're concerned about moving forward now that an ice storm warning will go into effect for Tarrant County. Why don't we go to the EOC for that to see if, if you've noticed repetition in areas and um, how the, the forecast might affect what we're looking at. Yeah, so a lot of the things, can you all still hear me okay? I know that we yeah. had issues earlier. We can hear you fine. A lot of the issue issues that we're seeing are all the flyover ramps, the, the entrance ramps onto the highways, intersections, things like that. We're having MVAs, uh, they're placed all over town right now, so it's it's not. Can you explain that word? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, motor vehicle accidents. Uh, so we are seeing a lot of accidents, and there, you know, yesterday morning when this storm first came in, we were seeing a lot of accidents on the north and on the west side of town. Um, as it's progressed into today, all, all the roads uh, citywide are, are pretty in pretty bad shape right now. So that's why yesterday there was some travel that was going on, and today we're asking everybody to stay at home. Um, as much as possible. Um, so, like I said, the, the, the overpasses and, and those intersections are kind of the main areas, and there's not just one specific place. It's, it's pretty scattered citywide. Okay. I do have another question. Um, what's the status of warming centers across the city? Will community centers, libraries be open at all for people who may not need shelter, but need a warm place to stay during the day? So, Scott, yeah, go ahead, Scott. 
Um, we have uh, Tara Perez. Um, she's also part of this. Uh, she's the uh, director of uh, the manager, rather, uh, for the homeless. Um, but uh, the question regarding where people can stay during the day, we have our community centers closing at 5 p.m. today, um, but they are expected to be reopened. Uh, maybe Tara can hop in and, and answer the that question for the reporter. Tara, are you still on? Yes. Uh, so I, I specifically work with our um, community experiencing homelessness. And so what is serving as the warming center for those folks is True Worth Place, uh, which is open to um, all adults um, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And this is done to coincide so people can go from a day shelter to overflow shelter or night shelter as needed. And so at this time, that is the, the warming center for um, the population experiencing homelessness. I can't speak to the uh, to the other warming centers. Okay, appreciate I that like continuity, to, though. Go ahead. Um, it, we're we're updating the website with places that are where that are opened each day, so that if anybody needs some place to go, that information will be on the website. So that's a good resource for everybody. Great. Any other questions? Shell, do you have any? No, I don't have any other questions, but if anybody thinks of anything, um, feel free to send it to um, Fort Worth Media at fortworthtexas.gov, or you can use the online form on our media page to submit something, and we will work with staff to get you an answer as soon as possible. And to those at the Emergency Operations Center, Transportation and Public Works, um, the Police Department, the Fire Department, uh, Code and Solid Waste, Neighborhood Services, um, and our officials and our city manager, David Cook, um, all working today to keep the city active and going and keep the services as um, strong as possible for our residents. We thank you and know that in addition to those we heard from, there are countless other departments and individuals that we didn't hear from that are dedicated um, city municipal workers, and we thank them for their work as well. Um, does anybody, any one of our speakers that spoke have any closing thoughts? Um, one more question just popped in. What time do the night shelters open? Scott or Tara on that one. Yes. Um, so they're, they're open now. And so what some of them are doing is they're starting um, what we call early check-in. So my understanding is check-in is happening now at Presbyterian Night Shelter and Salvation Army. Um, at UGM, I believe it happens again at um, six o'clock, but I can confirm that information for you. Okay, great. And if any reporters are needing any of the specific information that was on the slides um, that we included um, in today's uh, virtual news conference, we'll be glad to share those with you. Again, thanks to all of our participants today, and uh, we appreciate you amplifying the messaging and the great work the city of Fort Worth um, and the information that we gave out today. Thank you all.